Okay. Uh, good evening. This is the latest installment of, um, of uh, Building the Scottish State. I had intended to have Craig Murray uh, with me, who I've interviewed uh, at least two or three times in the past. Uh, and he arranged to be here at this time, or you know, about half an hour ago, he, we were supposed to have met up on that. Uh, I had heard from him early in the day. Uh, I got a brief email from him around 11 o'clock. Uh, and I noticed the last uh, ent entry on his blog at craigmarie.org.uk. And I'm just going to read it to you, contempt of court. I'm still frankly stunned that I was found in contempt of court. I maintain that I carefully identified nobody. And as empirically proven, the mainstream media did far more than I in revealing identities. I also believe that the terms of the opinion would make it simply impossible to report anything except the prosecution case in any sexual assault trial and that mainstream journalists were, are entirely sanguine about this because they believe that in practice, the ruling would only be used against dissidents, never against them. It is very difficult for me to try to explain why, in my own case, what has happened and, and has much wider bad consequences because it simply looks like special pleading. I'm therefore very pleased that legal anal uh, analyst uh, Alexander Morris has written this important piece in Consortium News and I should be grateful to you for reading it. So uh, please uh, go to craigmurray.org.uk and read his latest um, uh, entry. I hope that, I really hope that the reason that he's not there is not seriously grave in terms of his contempt of court. Uh, but all I know is that he was supposed to have been on uh, about a half an hour ago. He has not emerged. I tried to call him a couple of times on Facebook and to no avail. So uh, I, I would like to talk a little bit about what I wanted to talk to him about, which was the uh, manifesto for Indy and the legal implications for, uh, for Scotland's acceptance uh, or recognition as a, as a state, uh, as an independent state using the Manifesto for Indy. Uh, so for those of you who are unaware of it, uh, go to manifestoforindy.com. Uh, and it is a, uh, a manifesto that we've devised uh, to um, and encourage it, it basically to use the May elections as a uh, as a pro as an, as an um, expression of Scottish sovereignty in order to, uh, to to make the Scottish Parliament the supreme Parliament within Scotland, uh, essentially putting Westminster aside and becoming an independent country. And I wrote into this, and again, you can go to uh, manifesto for Indy, uh, dot com. Also, uh, the experts say I have on, on, the, on the upper uh, bar, uh, I've written an article based in international law arguing how this, you know, how the manifesto for Indy could be employed to in international law to gain more broad, uh, uh, broader recognition. Uh, I also point out in this article on manifestoforindy.com that I have been in con direct contact with EFTA officials who have assured me that um, if Scotland were to have a plebiscite election and declare independence in May, that, they that the Scottish government would be able to immediately send uh, a letter to the EFTA council requesting uh, uh, admission into EFTA, uh, there would be four governments concerned, uh, uh, Norway, Liechtenstein, Iceland, and uh, Switzerland. Uh, they would consider it at their next meeting. So if this was done in May, I don't know whether it would be May or June, when they would consider Scotland's application to become a member of EFTA, they would look very favorably upon it. And then, and then the, the members of EFTA who are members of the, also members of the EEA, the European Economic Area, which are Liechtenstein, Norway, and Iceland. Switzerland is not in the EEA and it's very, very complicated for them. So it would certainly be preferable that Scotland be in the EEA. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and so they would, you know, they, they would, th those three countries would speak as one voice in the EEA Council to get Scotland into uh, the EEA as soon as possible. And we'd consider the absolute plummeting 
of Scottish imports over the, the last month or two, or two since Brexit, you know, fish down 80%, whiskey down, uh, you know, I mean, it's unbelievably how horrific the, uh, you know, the, the import exports have plummeted and the, the Scottish economy is getting absolutely, you know, destroyed. Uh, because of this, and the idea, and and the idea that EFTA has basically reached out a lifeline to Scotland, if it takes advantage of uh, the Ind manifesto for Indy, uh, then they then they will then uh, and then EFTA will seriously consider allowing uh, Scotland in uh, and helping them get back in the EEA within the coming months. And this has been you know uh, this has been told to me by an EFTA official. No reason to doubt his sincerity or the authenticity. Uh, and we are in contact with both the uh, people in ALBA and in the SNP uh, about adopting the, uh, the manifesto for independence uh, in, their, uh, in their manifestos so that, that basically they commit that if they are elected, that they will support the idea that Scotland is, the Scottish people are sovereign and that they, with their, that sovereignty, they assert that uh, the Scottish Parliament is the Supreme Parliament over Scotland, and Westminster is no longer the Supreme Parliament. And uh, and and so through this expression of Scottish sovereignty, Scottish Scotland achieves its independence on the fifth or sixth of May. And this uh, and all that's required is for uh, the parties. ALBA, hopefully the SNP as well, to adopt this within their manifestos, and and independence could be achieved relatively quickly if that was to be if that was to be um, you know pursued, especially by the SNP and the and, and ALBA, and then again the the EFTA members would uh, readily accept Scotland and uh, and. Um, and uh, and and help Scotland get back into the EEA, potentially sa saving you know thou thou uh, you know tens of thousands of jobs, and especially in the fishing industry and the agricultural industry, and then uh, and then in EFTA, uh, this would allow Scotland to make a trade deal with the UK, so that you know there's no border between Scotland and England. Uh, the, it, Scotland could choose to participate in the EU programs that it wishes to, I mean, whether it's uh, you know research programs, uh, Erasmus, uh, student exchange. All of these programs would be available for Scotland to participate or not participate in, as 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 is the case with the other EFTA members. Uh, and and with the participation in the program, yes, there is a financial contribution that has to be made to uh, the EU, uh, also in terms of regional development programs, but uh, Scotland will have the capacity to um, uh, to sign its own trade deals, to, uh, to be in the single market, uh, and it's basically what the UK should have done uh, or could have done, but were too, uh, you know, in terms of the, its relationship with the EU, but was too dogmatically blinkered to Considered that they said we have to be out of the EEA, we have to be out of the single market, uh, which has obviously caused you know incredible damage to um, uh, to Scotland and, and and to the UK more generally. But that's uh, but that's what the UK government chose to do. But Scotland does not have to take this route. Uh, also, with EFTA, this does not preclude the possibility of Scotland joining the EU later on. Uh, now, if Scotland could be in EFTA and in the EEA within the coming months, if they use the manifesto for independent Indy for uh, to achieve independence in May, uh, that nothing, as I said, nothing precludes Scotland from becoming an EU member later. But the main dis dis distinction is if uh, I know that the SNP and many many people have, you know, many Scots, you know, wanted to voted to stay in the EU. I understand, I, you know, that that's totally understood. However, the how short term EU membership would be achieved is very uh, pro problem problematic. And, um, and even if, and, and so the idea that we, there would be some, um, uh, there would be some, uh, you know, uh, uh, independence referendum with or without a section 30 order at some point in the next five years, whether it would be considered valid or legitimate, whether or not it would be considered um, 
you know, whether it would be whether it be accepted is very problematic, and especially for EU entry. You know, Spain's been in a pretty bad mood about Catalonia for a while. They may pretty they may you know grumble about you know letting Scotland in. EFTA is there for the taking. The door is open, and again, nothing precludes. Scotland from becoming a member of a member of EFTA in the short term, and nothing precludes it from becoming an EU a member of the EU in the longer term. But they will, but Scotland will be able to make that decision, uh, as we say in French, tranquillement, tranquilly, with without being in a in a situation of being out of the single market and out of the uh, customs union, but being in a situation where they are where they can where Scotland can make a democratic, uh, measured. Uh, you know, decision based on you know the, the 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 advantages and disadvantages of being an EFTA in the EU, and in a situation where the economy is much more stable because they will be as Scotland will be in the single market. So, and that's what I wanted to talk to Craig Murray about this evening, and I'm very very disappointed and. I hope that it's not uh, the reason he's not on is not something pretty grave like involving the police and his contempt of court hearing. We will, that has yet to be seen. But uh, uh, but again, uh, this is not like him. Uh, normally, he's very punctual. And uh, again, I heard from him about eleven o'clock this morning uh, by email. So I really hope that uh, that you know all is well with him and his uh, his family and his new and newborn son. So uh, I'll leave it at that for this evening, but uh, just to say I'm you know, very disappointed and very concerned that uh, Craig was not able to join us this evening. And I hope that it's not anything really bad, uh, but, uh, but I also wanted to explain what I wanted to talk about. And I know that if he had been able to participate this evening, he would have been very, he would have contributed uh, uh, to a large extent about uh, Scotland being able to attain uh, independence through an alternate route to a section 30 order and what 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 could have been and what 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 may still become so uh i'll leave you all this evening on those thoughts again i'm i really hope that you know the reasons he is not there are very mundane uh but it doesn't conceal the fact that i'm very concerned that he has not been you know um you know in, in you know in you know, in dire difficulty over the over these contempt of court charges that I read to you about. So anyway, uh, thank you. Good evening. Uh, this is one of the more difficult um, um, uh, shows I've ever done because I just don't know why he's not here, uh, given his reliability. And uh, but uh, but I did want to explain to you why he was you know th that he was not here, and I also wanted to explain to you what I wanted to talk to him about. Uh, in terms of uh, Scotland becoming independent through the Manifesto for Indi, Indi Manifesto for Indi uh, and then the, possi the possibility uh, of joining EFTA, which has been extended to us on a red carpet, basically, uh, that is there for the taking. If but Scotland has to make a decision on its sovereignty on the fifth of May, and so I hope that that's what will happen. Okay, so thank you. Uh, I hope that. I can have Craig on again soon, and this is a very difficult uh, broadcast to make. Uh, it's the first time I've been confronted with this situation, but uh, you know, peace to all of you, and uh, we hope that um, we hope that Craig is is, is all right. And uh, so I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll, I hopefully will be having numerous shows, uh, I, I, more frequent shows in the future, uh, especially in the run up to the coming May election. But uh, good night for this evening.